So in this video, we'll be looking at drawer. Drawer is something that it's almost like a an over, so imagine when you have a book, I think this is an okay example, and you're on one of the pages, but you have to backtrack and look at something on part of another page and you need to kind of like fold part of it over into what you're reading. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just get a book out if you still have those ancient things, right? And just uh, get on a page and then fold part of a page over onto the one you're reading. Um, or really, you'll see what it is. It's basically just uh, pulling out some content from the left or right side of the page bottom and displaying it for the user. We've all seen them before. They're pretty powerful. I really like them. You could also use them for like menu-esque uh, kind of situations which I think is pretty cool as well. So we're going to be looking at the docs on that one, and then we're going to be going through um, some cool examples and whatnot. So let's get to reading. So it says, the drawer component is a panel that slides out from the edge of the screen. It can be useful when you need to have users complete a task or view some details without leaving the current page. Without leaving the current page is important, because remember, if they bounce out of your page, will they come back? What if the next page they go to makes it hard for them to come back, right? So this is a nice way to kind of contain your users to make them hang out in your services longer. Um, although you don't want to trap them in because that's kind of a, you know, a dick thing to do. You don't want to unnecessarily bounce them from doing some kind of task or looking at some kind of information because no one likes that in general. No one likes to, uh, you know, if I want to look at, you know, this text right here, I don't want to, you know, and I need to update something. I don't want to click and go through like 19 layers of website before I come back to here. And drawers give the ability to do something and forget. So we have all the imports here. We have the drawer, body, footer, header, overlay, close button. It looks like a lot, but it's pretty cool. So let's do this right here. We have this, and I'm sure the way I'm editing it, you may just have to wait till we get to the code examples. Right now, the side of my web page is opening up. It's probably gray to you right now. And there's like an input box, some text, a close button, and a couple buttons at the bottom here. And so we have this ref that they're using to, uh, when they uh, click on this right here, we, you know, it's, it's syncing up. And so this final focus ref, is referring to this right here. And then we have on click, on open. So we have this use disclosure, which is from Chakra Library. And it's a nice way to kind of toggle open, closed states and ask if something is open. You don't have to use it, but it's cool that they give you this. They actually have a few functions or hooks, I should say, that are kind of similar, but if you uh, don't know what use disclosure is, you could have your own use state if you want to, to kind of house this functionality, but don't look over because it's easy to look over in the documentation here, the hooks they provide for you. These are just really nice ways to not have to write stuff yourself. And so we have the drawer here, which is kind of the granddaddy of them all. And then in here we have the overlay, which is coming on in and we have this overlay and then notice that it's closing itself right here. So kind of keep that in mind. So we have the drawer, which is encapsulating all of this. We have the overlay coming in and then we have the content and the content is seeming right here to house the footer, the body, and then, you know, the, the close button and then the header right here. So it kind of looks a little kind of funky the way it's kind of being, you know, brought into here. You know, compared to some of the other examples, I kind of wish that the drawer overlay would wrap and, you know, be kind of the, the second parrot component to drawer, but, you know, I can't have things my way all the time. So the close button is going to be here at the top because it's going to render at the top right. We have the header, which is going to appear next to it saying, you know, create your account. And then we have the body, which is whatever you want to put inside of here. And it doesn't have to be an input. It could be you know, user options. It could be stuff about their profile. Maybe it's even like a friends list. Maybe you're creating a messenger app and this is a way to, you know, just 
quickly gloss over and see like which of your friends are online. So never neglect what you could put in a drawer or the body of some component. You could do some extravagant things. And then the bottom, the very bottom, in which this case it's the bottom of, you know, my website here, we have the cancel, which is a button that is uh, hidden inside of the footer along with the save. So we can make things pop in from certain angles right here. So let's do right. You may not be able to see it. Let's do bottom. I'm going to do it from all angles. Left, I highly doubt you all be able to see. And then top coming down on down in here. I'm pretty sure y'all can see the top, even though the contents are probably cut off. So we'll have to wait to the examples on that one. And so we have the top right, bottom left right here. And so we have the placement as we set them here inside of this radio button right here. And then this is just going to be applied down below to where it's coming out. So we have the radio group, we have the on change, we set the placement here. And then this is really just updating this value when we click on it. So use state whenever we click on one of these, it's updating the text essentially in the use state. And then this placement right here, if we look down a little bit farther, we could see this placement prop right here. And this is essentially just being hooked up to this use state. So as we click, here, it's showing, or telling, I should say, inside of the drawer, what side of the page is going to open up at. And maybe you want, I don't know why you would, but maybe you want certain things to appear from the right, and maybe certain things to appear from the bottom. Maybe you want info stuff to appear from the bottom, and from your right or left side of the page, you want more profile app navigation functionality kind of stuff so you can split it up just be kind of smart about it because you don't want to just you know you don't want to have your user uh have like whack-a-mole of what side of the screen is going to come down you know next and so we have focus on a specific element when a form is in the drawer you might need to set focus on a specific element when a drawer opens Pass the initial focus ref, ref prop. So as we click create user, imagine you all can't see this right here, but there's this input and it's flashing. And it's, if I were to start typing, my text is going into this input element. And so all we're doing is we have this first field right here. And so there's this use ref hook. So let's see where this is being put at. And so this is being referenced right here. And so in this drawer, we have this initial focus ref. So this is going to initiate uh, the input being clicked for the user, essentially. So this is just if you could just, you know, open the drawer and start typing, where is your text going to go? And so the initial focus ref is whatever this ref is. And so we're putting it here in the input. So when I click open, it shows the text or the input field as you know ready to start receiving information. And there's a bunch of other stuff in here I'm not going to cover because it's just a larger, more drawn out drawer example here. The really big focus of this was just that, you know, uh, initial focus ref there. We could also have different drawer widths. So we have extra small, then we have a full drawer. So let's open the full drawer, which is all this stuff. And I bet this is still cut off because I had a very artsy fartsy way of presenting this information, but stuff like drawers and these overlays make my editing look like junk. But what happens now is that the entire screen is taken up by this drawer and when you do that full screen mode what you have to do is you have to establish some kind of way to kick out of it in this case i'm hitting the escape key because that's what it's telling me and it goes back now if i want to open the drawer to excel size which this should appear in the shot we can see here that this drawer opens up and then if we want to do extra small this may or may not appear but it's still a respectable size, but 
that's because I'm on a desktop. And you could come in here, you have the different sizes. They're running an array through here, so they have a map. And basically, you have the key right here, and then we're putting the you know size in here. So we're basically rendering out all the different, you know, the first one's extra small and goes all the way up to full. So as we go through in here, that's changing what button, um, you know, what the key is for that. But then if you really don't care about this whole loop thing coming in here, and I imagine most of y'all won't, just go to your size. Just go to your size drawer right here and make it extra small, full, XL, large, whatever it may be. You know, uh, I don't think they needed an, an, uh, an array for all this stuff, but, you know, I think it overcomplicates some things. But here you go. Just change the size here to extra small all the way up to full. Your options are right there. And you could also use a form in a drawer. It says you need to put, a f if you need to put a form in a drawer, you may need to use a form validation library. And they have these right here. Here's the recommended way to do it. I don't use these libraries. I kind of looked at them a little bit, but I'm, you know, kind of indifferent to this. I don't have like any skin in the game, but I guess if you are using any kind of validator or external library, you may want to, you know, use this here. But yeah, let me know if you're using something like this because I'd be very, very interested. And then more stuff about accessibility here. Be sure to read over these, understand, because uh, it's important to cover all of your users and understand how your users of all different, you know, varying, uh, you know, skill sets and adaptations are coming in. And then we got some good old props. And, uh, you know, I just want to get to coding because I've been talking long enough. So I'll see you all in just a moment. Alrighty. In this first example, what we're going to do is we're going to make a very basic drawer. You could see here at the top, these are, unless I accidentally left something out, which I'll have to enter in, these are all the imports that I'm going to be needing. And so let's get to coding a basic example, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. All right, so now we have this right here. Let me come, come up and move this down a little bit here. So let's walk through this. So we have this box right here. We don't have to worry about that. That's just so this button pops out a little bit more. So it's not hiding in the upper left-hand corner. But we have this box right here, and we have this ref, and it's button ref, which is coming in from this use ref right here. Now... I don't use refs uh, a ton, at least I haven't had to. I don't know what that says about me as a React developer. But personally, I just have not had to use them a whole lot. But in Shocker, there's a few cases where you should, and components say, hey, you must use it if you want to use this you know, feature. And so why do we need this button ref right here? Well, if we look in the actual drawer, which we'll explain fully in a minute, we have this final focus ref. And so this 
will say, hey, when this thing like closes, what do I go back to? And so when you close the drawer, it'll go back to focusing on this button right here. It'll tell, you know, um, the application, hey, come right back to here. So that way it, you logically come back from, from where you came, right? You don't want to focus randomly on another button or part of your app that's focusable. You want to be able to click to open and then cancel here and then come back to the focus on the button as you just saw. So we see we have used disclosure. This is just one of the many ways that Chakra right here provides you a hook right here to, you know, open and handle closing of like dialogues, drawers, pop-ups, things like that. And so we have is open, which is the Boolean value, you know, is it or is it not in a state of being open? And so the drawer is asking for, is this thing open or not? And you could probably guess right now the value of is open from use disclosure is defaulting to false right here. But when we click on click in the button here, it fires off this that says, nope, we're going to switch is open to true, essentially, right? So that's what we're doing here. And we come down into here, and what you need to know is we have drawer. We have this drawer overlay, which is kind of placed funny, right? It closes itself, so it's, it's this, this island of a component by itself, and it says to put it, at least in the instructions, that it goes above the drawer content. I've not tried placing this anywhere else. I just follow the visual steps they give me, and I suggest you do too. So we have the drawer, we have the drawer overlay, and then we have the content, which is the next component that wraps everything. So you have drawer, this drawer overlay, which doesn't wrap anything, and then you have the drawer content here and let me space this out and then essentially it comes into three different pieces so then we have the close button which makes sense we have that up there is the drawer close button as you could tell there's no on click on close open anything here it's self-contained functionality and it represents this thing right here and so we have the drawer header next and it says account activity right up in here. You can imagine put other stuff up here, but notice that the text here is a bit more bold. So obviously it's a header, it's supposed to grab your attention, be kind of the focal point from when, you know, from where you're supposed to read top down. And then we have this drawer body, which is everything else. So we have this text in here, you could put pictures, you could put a list, whatever makes the most sense for your application. And it says you subscribe. Actually, I, miss, I misspelled that. Let's just call it subs, subscribed. <laughs> you subscribed to my channel. And then we have a footer. And then the footer is just like the body, except the placement is going to be down here towards the bottom. I don't suggest making it too complicated here. But when we click cancel, it fires off the on close, meaning that this drawer up here is going from true to false, which means it closes. Now, we don't have to come in just from the right. We have other options. Let's do from the bottom. And so it's coming in from the bottom right here, which is pretty neat. I've definitely seen these kinds of things before, especially when they've asked about like storing cookies on your site and stuff like that. We could come in from the left. Comes in right here. You notice it covers your button, but you know, we could click off or we could also click cancel. It's the same thing, just a different angle. And then lastly, we come from the top, which is kind of cool. I think it depends on what you want to use this for. If you're using it for a kind of a menu settings thing, I think you'd want to come from the left or the right because you may have a, a larger list of items you may want to show, but you may want to drawer if you want to notify them of like, say, you know, can we store cookies on your site or, you know, a you know you subscribed to my channel or you just purchased something some kind of um i don't want to say alert because there's all sorts of uh, alerts and other things in chakra but it's a way to overlay your screen and notify your end user that hey something just happened and i do like drawers a lot i think they're incredibly flexible and you could pull off a lot of ideas with them so this is it for the basic 
implementation of a drawer. We're going to take just a brief break. And then in a couple seconds, when we come back, what we're going to do is look at the different sizes of the drawer. And so I'll see you all in just a moment. All right, so what we're going to do here is just add something very simple, which is size. And so we have a bunch of different sizes here. So let's do something like large. And what we're going to do is since we've looked over this code, we've seen this already, I'm going to move this over just a little bit because all we're doing is looking at the size here. We're moving this on out and we're coming from the top. And so, okay, come from the top. It doesn't really look too different than before. Let's go from the bottom. Doesn't look too different than before, right? Let's come from the right. Ah, but we see right here, it comes over a lot farther than it did before. And so this is the thing for the top and the bottom, when it comes to the size, there's not, I find as much flexibility unless they've updated the version of it by now. So an issue that you need to keep in mind is that you're not, you know, going crazy if you're saying, you know, I want a large drawer coming from the top but it looks, it kind of looks the same across the board, right? So you kind of want to be careful about those settings. They may have fixed something or maybe something's wrong on my end, but just know there may be some tinkering that goes on right here. We could also do full. So what is full? You probably guessed it. Covers the entire screen right here. And for like a menu thing, this isn't bad either because maybe you have you know, a giant drawer of options. You have the user settings, settings about the app, maybe security stuff in a column over here, or, you know, if it's in mobile, you'd have to stack these lists. But, you know, you always want to give your users a way to cancel, you know, save or get out of here. I believe if I hit cancel or escape, yeah, if I hit escape on my keyboard, it pops out. So there's different sizes. Feel free to play with them, whatever makes the most sense. You could probably use state or something to control this, right? Depending upon your screen size. So this is how you deal with sizes along with the uh, placements. So just kind of be conscious of what you're asking the size to be in relation to where the placement, so where the drawer is coming in at. But yeah, that's drawers. If you like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe, and I'll definitely see you all in the next video.